How much did you raise in the I? I think fourteen at sixty something. Yeah. Um, so, so like you know, it was like a decent round, good investors, good terms. It was a great uh, timing round. Don't was call good. that decent. Yeah, no, it, good timing. <laughs> so like. Would we have held on like three months later? Well, to be honest, we did raise that 220 plus uh, our B run three months later. But yeah, that was you know, another story for another time. Right, but <laughs> right, like that's easier said than done, right? Right. When you raised 14, was that the output of a specific plan where you said, okay, well, we know we need exact, we need 14 to do X, Y, and Z, or like how much did you pull that out of thin air? Uh, well, if you if you know me, you know that. I never think that way. Uh, for me, it's always, and actually it's tr- it got strengthened after the A. The A was the only round that was like in the middle, like budgeting versus like what I'm going to talk about, uh, which is how much would I sell the percentage, this part of the company for, and why would I sell it to that person, right? right. And that, that actually helped us a lot for the fundraisers we did after because when you have like cash in the bank, when you're growing nicely, where things are going like in the right direction, then you can switch mindset. You're not here to prove like, if you give me that money, I'll get there. You're here more saying, hey, you want to be part of the story. Why? And right. what would I be willing to sell you that chunk of the company for? Right. Which right. at the end of the day, if you think of like a financing event, it, although it's, you know, now it's like unicorns and rainbows, like it is what you're doing, right? You're selling right. part of the company for right. a chunk of cash, right? So right. for us, switching to that mindset was super important. So getting to a comfortable amount versus value provided by the investor was super important. And in, in the case of Anderson, because it was the first fundraise that we had properly done, because it was, you, we did do the exercise of like, hey, like with this, this is where we should be able to get to. Right. And then, you know, the last, like, I think it was 10. And then the last mile of negotiation was around valuation and ownership or stuff like that. But after that, right. my mindset was always like, wh- like, why would I sell you part of the company? What right. value would I be willing to do it for? Right, which is absolutely the right mindset. You're the one with the scarce good in that situation. If you have a good company, you're the one who has the thing the VC wants. They have money, but a lot of people have money, right? So you're saying, okay, how much is this worth and is it the person? So mm-hmm. obviously there's a challenge in there for a lot of founders where a lot of founders maybe don't have the luxury where people are chasing them or where the company has, you know, like top decile metrics and is just kind of rolling over everyone. Any thoughts on what a founder that is maybe not at, top of the growth charts can do running into something like an A or thinking about an A and thinking about, hey, how do I, how do I think about this question? I think my perspective is that if you don't have top metrics, why bother with VC money, right? Build your business, build a great business, make good money, retire in 10 years, sell the business, yeah. right? Like if you're looking for venture capital, you're probably looking to build a high growth startup. If you don't have the high growth metrics, why why go and fundraise? So if you want to raise and you don't have them yet, take the next six months to get there yeah. or rethink your strategy, right? Like maybe you don't take money from VCs, go take like debt or something else. But uh, yeah, I mean, I unless you have a clear, clear path to like being able to get to scale and growing like crazy, but then, yeah, then you have to convince people, which is a different story, right? Same way you have to convince when you raise a seed round. Yeah, maybe rethink your strategy on whether or not raising venture capital money makes sense for your company. Yeah, that's an interesting point. And I think it's a it's a hard thing for a lot of people to think through, especially as you get further down the financing path. Okay, so you start and you raise some angel money or a seed. That's one thing. Raising an A is a different, it's a different beast altogether, right? And then if you get past the A and you don't have the growth, well, then do you raise a B, do you raise a C? You know, there's there's all these off ramps, but they get harder. Yeah, it depends what you want to achieve, right? The problem is like, I mean, guilty, right? Like when I was there at some point, I had the same mindset. It's just like, what are you raising the money for? Are you just like trying, like, is your mind like, I just want to build a big company and get there. Like if this is that, then you then you have other problems, right? Like if you want to be in the game for the next 10, 12 years and build a huge business, it's got to be more than just, I want to build a great company. So if, if your mindset is not, I just want to build a great company, then you're you start thinking, what, why do I want to do this? Right? right. Like we, f- we want to help a hundred plus million people get to work for the best companies in the world. Right. Like building that global infrastructure for, for people to work for the best companies. Like, I think like, this is what gets me up at night. Not let's build deal to be a hundred billion dollar company. Although right. like, sure, that, that'd be amazing. That'd be and cool. that's probably hopefully where we're going to get there. Uh, so like, if you think about like, why are you doing this? Then then you, you usually can have a better decision making on whether or not it makes sense for you to raise external capital and from who and all. I, you know, again, easier said than done, but yeah. you know, it's important. 
you know, I've never actually thought about it quite this way, but um, raising venture, it, I think most people think about it as, oh, it gives me all these options. It creates optionality because it lets me do so many more it's things. It's the opposite. But it's the opposite. It constricts you. <laughs> yeah. It forces you into a set of things, right? Good good luck acquiring Dill, right? <laughs> like, it's like, so no, it's like a very thoughtful decision. Like, right. you know, I, I've, I've seen it so many times where like you raise an A, you raise a B, you could have kept with your sin money, built something great and probably make more money when you sell your company without having raised external capital, right? So again, it depends on what is your purpose, like what do you want to achieve? Right. Uh, and yeah, I mean, for sure, raising venture capital corners you into like, well, either I find an acquirer for like, uh, at the time, right, a $70 million check to buy our company or the company dies or I raise another round and, you know, the exit path is like an IPO, right, eventually. Right. So it's, yeah, I if you don't have to, and if this isn't like, if you don't truly believe your company can get there, you don't need to force it. Like, sure, it's nice. You get a TechCrunch article, but after that, you got to do the work. Right. So stuff that happens afterwards, it's a lot trickier. So, okay. So let's, let's talk about the, the round itself. So and you're, you're growing, the business is doing incredibly well. You think you could raise, but you haven't actually decided to go out for a process and Nish reach reaches out a second time and you decide, okay, Andreessen's good. Yes, we could use the money but we don't want to just negotiate against a niche. Like you don't want to be one-on-one -on -one against a firm, right? So what do you do in that moment? And I remember this was pretty fast, but what did you do to make sure that you had at least a level playing field in that process? What, what was the process that came together? I think when you want to raise a series, you got to prepare the, the whole thing a little better, right? Like, and a little before. So yeah. I think throughout Q1, and you can keep me honest and look at our investor updates, but when we started getting some traction, I started kind of like in my investor update asking, hey, like, who do you think is the best person we could talk to for an eventual Series A or things like that? So that kind of like builds the word of mouth of network of like the value and external the value, which is like, hey, Dill is starting to think about that. You should meet them. You should meet them. You should meet them. You should meet them. And then right. you start kind of building up for... Ah, for what eventually wait, 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 wait. Ah, da, 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 da. You don't meet Aha. yet. Okay. <laughs> you don't meet At yet. You just create the right. environment, right. right? You create the environment, which is like, Dill is thinking about a Series A. Right. There's a whole and bunch of like, people you want, talking. Buzz. Exactly. You want Ryan, you want Aaron, you want like for us, Elad or Daniel to start saying, hey, like I have, you know, it's in their best interest for us to right. eventually raise a Series A, right? Like, so you want them to start saying, oh, you know, at lunch with their friend, investor friend, oh, yeah, my, my company, they've been growing like 20% month on month. They have pretty good metrics. Like, they're thinking about raising an A at some point. It's that concept uh, a friend of mine taught me a couple of months ago, which is like, when everybody around you starts saying, oh, those guys are good, you should look at it. Those guys are good, you should look at it. Then, you know, you eventually want to look at it. And that helps right. a lot when you're fundraising. It's called advertising. Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> it, it is. Word of mouth advertising. I know, yes, but, yeah. that's, but, no, but, but people <laughs> underestimate this. And, I, and this is the funny thing. I think people, you didn't do the thing where you just sat quietly forever and hoped something would come your way. You actually started to build that whisper network, right? You made sure that yeah, it was fertile ground. Look, there's a there's a saying uh, I love. Uh, I don't remember who taught me that. Probably my father, uh, which is I think it's kind of a Jewish saying as well. Let me translate it from French. Help yourself, and the sky will help you, right? And God will help you. If you don't help yourself, right, you know, right, no one is going to do it for you, right? So right. like, you know, building out the playing field, being a couple of steps ahead, understanding like, okay, like I start working on this in January. I'll be able to get the right introduction in March. Like you, it's your job, right? You got to think about that. No one is thinking about your company apart from you, right? So right. you need to make the right decisions. Can I pull on one thing so, that yeah. you said? Yeah. Nobody's thinking about you. I think um, a lot of founders have the wrong idea in their head. They think that they're angel investors, that they're series A investors. They're like, are always thinking about their company because they're so special. Nobody thinks about you. Nobody, <laughs> right? Until you I'm make sure, them I'm think sure. about you. I'm sure there's some people that invested in deal that probably don't even remember <laughs> they invested in They're deal, gonna get so. a very nice check one day, I guess, right? Yeah. If you could go back in time and do something different about your A, what would you have done differently or or what do you think I don't know, looking back wasn't exactly what you would have wanted to do? I would have done my A the exact same way we did it. I wouldn't have changed anything. I would have done my seed differently. 
I would have raised a little less capital at our seed. Yeah. I think $4 million was a lot. And yeah. specifically at Holden, we were. We didn't have to dilute ourselves that much that early. Uh, but, you know, we've, if you can rebuild the word, so, you know, it's easier said now. Right. Uh, but I think our A is pretty well executed with a good partner, good timing, um, good market timing as well from like a PR perspective that was yes. really good for us to leverage. So... I, I would redo it the exact same way we did it today. Yeah, I think that's fair. And I think the lesson I'll take from that is thinking about that seed, thinking about dilution, really, and, and thinking about the fact that your company is always going to be more valuable in the future if you're doing a good job. I think the tendency yeah. for people is to raise too much money at any given round. And so you want to think about how much you're selling and what you like, whether or not you should do that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, it's very situational, right. but the early, like early on, the difference between two million dollars and two and a half or two and three it's big it's big from an equity perspective yeah it's not big from an execution perspective right that's I, what like, i mean th that's important right. so like you know it was the first time someone ever gave us money so we're like the more we take the better but i think right. there's a threshold at which like you got 2.5 million dollars you should be able to get to a nice series a and not take for in our case that 1.7 plus million dollars dilution we did like raise the cap like we didn't dive into that but we did raise a bunch at 10 and then a bunch at 15 yeah um so that kind of helped it helped if you can raise two and a half if you can't execute to a million bucks in arr on that you have another you have another problem right and if you're going to raise more yeah. make sure you're getting to a lot more than a million in arr and like raise a different kind of thing yeah, exactly so i think mean, that's the thing i would like to sit around pre-seed i think a lot of people give a lot away of their company if I was starting again, I would never do that again.